In this section of the electrical diagnostic uh, video, we're going to be taking a look at the tail light, which is a combination of the running light and the brake light in a single unit. So the tail light is actually a little bit more complicated than it might appear because although it's a single unit, there are two different circuits that run through it uh, as an assembly. The first is the running light and parking light. So when the headlight's on, the tail light's on, or if you have the key switch in the parking mode, the tail light kicks on. The second is the brake light. So when you squeeze the front brake lever or push down on the brake pedal, the rear light illuminates and it ha each one has its own circuit, but they do share the common assembly. So let's talk about each circuit independently and then how they join together in the actual tail light. So the first one we're gonna talk about is the actual running light circuit and parking light because they are intermingled with each other depending on the key switch position. Now, with all our circuits, we always start with the ground. In this case, the ground runs through and the tail light, even though it's rubber mounted, has its own ground wire. So it's a solid green wire that comes out of the harness and connects to the tail light assembly through the dimmer of the two filaments in the bulb. It is a dual filament bulb. We'll look at that in a minute. Out of the bulb to this brown wire here. Brown wire comes out of the fender. It runs through the harness up to the key switch. And this is where it gets interesting. We have the bike in run mode, that brown wire connects to a brown and white wire which runs up to the handlebar switch. So our headlight kicks on, our tail light kicks on at the same time. However, if we move the key switch back one more click and we go to the parking mode, that connects the tail light directly to 12 volt positive power and the tail light kicks on with all the other lights not being able to turn on. So let's assume we're in run mode and not parking mode the headlight switch, back through 12 volt positive, so it's gonna be a solid black, all the way through the harness, ending up back at our positive side of the battery, which is always our finish line for the circuit. Our second circuit we're gonna look at is gonna be the brake light circuit. So when you hit the brakes, the light illuminates. Much like the running light, we're always gonna start with the negative side of the battery. Through the wiring harness on the solid green wire, it uses the same ground as the running light. So there's one ground to do both functions in this tail light because it is rubber mounted. It goes through the brighter of the two filaments in the one bulb that's in here, out of the bulb and into this green wire with a yellow stripe on it coming out of the fender. That green and yellow wire runs through the harness and then it splits one of those leads goes down to the foot switch for the brake light. So when you push the pedal down, um, it activates the light. The other side of it will run to the front handlebar switch. Now, depending on what type of front brake you have on your bike, that switch location is gonna be a little bit different. In this case, we have a disc brake front end. So we're gonna have a pressure switch down below on the left-hand side on the lower triple tree. If you have a drum brake, there's a switch that's gonna be located in the perch with that same green and uh, yellow wire. Now, either switches, the other side of the switch is gonna be plugged into a solid 12 volt positive black wire. And we already know that solid 12 volt positive black merge together to the key switch and we'll end up back at our positive terminal on the battery. The easiest and most obvious thing we're gonna test is the bulb. And the bulb is the common link between both of these running light and brake light circuits. So I'm gonna pop the lens off, I'm gonna test the bulb to make sure it's working properly on both sides of its circuit or both filaments. So this is our, our brake tail light bulb. It is an incandescent bulb, and we have two filaments inside the bulb. One is for the running light, one is for the brake light. The round body of the bulb here, this is our ground connection. Each of these little dots here 
is the positive side for the bulb. So we're gonna test the bulb out to make sure both filaments in the bulb are working. Only one of them has to be bad for the whole bulb to be bad. All right, we're gonna test the bulb and we're gonna do it with a couple of our, our jumpers here. I'm gonna grab the body of the bulb there, which is gonna be ground. I can hook to the negative side of the battery. And then I'm gonna take my other jumper here. I'm gonna hold the end away. I don't let it touch anything. And I'm gonna connect to the positive side of the battery, like that. So now this is positive. I'm gonna to touch either bottom terminal on the battery and each filament will light up independently. We're gonna test each one. First one. Second one. See how the second one is a lot dimmer than the first one? That's gonna be our running light. And our brighter one is gonna be the actual brake light. So this bulb is good because both filaments are working. This is what they call a bayonet style bulb. You see those little dots on the side? They are offset, so the bulb can only go in one direction. And let's see if we can figure out which one it is. Push in, turn clockwise a little bit till you feel it click, like that. If I put it in backwards, it doesn't wanna turn. Right, so that's wrong. Turn it 180, try it again, turns, locks in place, just like that. So I'm gonna isolate the taillight assembly from the other uh, wiring in the bike by disconnecting the brown wire, the green and yellow wire, and the green ground wire right here. So ground first disconnected, green and yellow disconnected, Brown is connected. Okay, so we're gonna actually be testing if our connections between here and uh, through the assembly and back are good and not worrying about the rest of the harness. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect my ground to ground. Not too worried about that. And we know that we have a good frame ground there. Let's test out the running light first. I'm gonna take my other jumper. I'm gonna connect it to the positive side of the battery. Make sure not to touch anything else. And I'm gonna touch the brown wire here and let's see if the light kicks on. Sure enough, it does. So that means I have good connection from ground all the way through the light, through the socket, through the bulb back out here to this wire, terminating at the positive side of the battery because we're using our jumper. Same tests, we're gonna do it on the brake light now, touching the green and yellow wire. And the light kicks on, that means we're good. This is the circuit for the light itself is in good shape. And so if there's a problem, we're gonna find that problem upstream in the wiring harness. Okay, we know that the tail light's working. We're gonna test the ground side of the circuit here, which is this little uh, bundle of wires here with a solid green. Should be good. I'm gonna connect my test light to the 12 volt positive side of the battery. I'll take my test light and just insert it into the connection here and see my light kicks on. Sure enough, it does. That means I have good ground connection from here all the way to the negative side of the battery. So my ground side of the circuit is good. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna test the positive side of the circuit. First, I'm gonna test the running light circuit, which I know is the brown wire. So in this case, I can connect my test lead to ground or the negative side of the battery, no problem. I'm going to put my test light into the terminal here, make sure it touches nothing else. I don't want that metal part of the body to touch anything else. There, and I'm gonna turn on my key switch. So key switch is going to the run position I'm gonna turn on my headlight switch up here. Test light kicks on, that means I have uh, connectivity from here all the way through the switch back to my positive side of the terminal here. Turn off this light. I'm gonna put my key switch into the parking light mode and this light should kick on from parking light. There it is, I'm in parking, which means now I have good connection from here through the switch back to the positive side of the battery. So that says that side of the circuit for the running light is working as it should. Uh, now we're gonna do the brake light, which is gonna be the green with yellow stripe wire. Uh, very similar to the running light. I'm gonna get the test light in there. I'm hooked to ground already with the test light. 
and I'm gonna kick on the power. Light should be off, and when I squeeze the front brake, the light should kick on. Light does, so that means that my switch, my front brake is working, and then when I'm gonna reach over here, push down on the pedal to make sure that my, my rear brake light switch is working, you should get the same result. Light kicks on. So that says both switches are working and both circuits connect either way. Again, terminating at the positive side of the battery terminal. Now there's an important uh, note I wanna say here. Sometimes if the brake light switch, especially the foot switch, but sometimes it's the front switch on the drum brakes, is malfunctioning or is improperly adjusted, what will happen is it will turn on the brake light all the time. And some people think that that brake light being on all the time is actually the running light. And they have a hard time realizing, no, the running light is being eclipsed by the brightness of the brake light and the switch is either misadjusted or not working properly and they think that the brake light is the running light and vice versa. So uh, it's important to realize, hey, which side of the circuit is actually illuminating um, if, it's, if you're trying to diagnose this. So that can happen, especially if you make a rear wheel adjustment or a rear brake adjustment, that switch will need to be adjusted as well as to not turn on the light when the brake is in the rest position. Okay, we're gonna actually test the, the foot switch now or the, the rear brake switch that's activated by the pedal. And this switch, as the pedal moves down, it pulls down this little tiny piece of metal right here. In fact, we can take it out of here. Let's just take it out. So where the switch works is as the pedal goes down, pulls on that and that activates the switch and it is adjustable depending on brake position. I'm going to put that back in place there, lock down, and here's how we're going to do this. We're going to connect our test light to our green, our green and yellow right there, connection. I get it wedged in there good. We can go ahead and connect that to ground, which we know is good. And then I'm going to connect the black wire directly to my battery. 12 volt positive, making sure I don't touch anything else. And as I move the pedal down, the test light should kick on. Now we're getting some intermittency in there. Yeah, there it is. So it's working, but it's got, you know, this one may be a little dirty, because we're getting some intermittency on it. I should just kick on nice and bright. There it is. So we're, we're pretty good. We probably could stand and clean it or replace it. But that's testing that switch right there. Now, if the switch is improperly adjusted, I'm gonna go ahead and unhook that from the battery real quick. I'm gonna show you what an improperly adjusted switch will do. So I'm gonna tighten this little nut up that's on here. I brought that nut down and what it does is it pulls the switch to being on all the time. Go back to our battery here. And although I'm not putting the pedal down, the light kicks on, which would mean if it was improperly adjusted, your brake light would always be on regardless of you pushing the pedal making you think that the tail light's on, the brake light's always on, and the adjustment is as simple as, you know, bringing up the slack and that nut, running it up just a little bit. Do that just a second here, unplug that. Let's bring that up just a little bit with my fingers. We can even set like how sensitive it is. If you want to tighten up a bit more, but it should be as I push the pedal down, the brake light kicks on. For those bikes equipped with a hydraulic disc brake, here is our pressure switch right here. We got our solid 12 volt positive black wire and our green and yellow wire. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug them from the switch, move them aside, and we're gonna test the switch by itself. Here's how we're gonna do it on this particular version. I'm gonna take my jumper, I'm gonna go to one side of it, doesn't matter, and that jumper I'm gonna go straight to ground with on the engine right there. For the sake of space here, I'm gonna take my test light, I'm gonna hook my alligator clip to my 12 volt positive side, which means that anything I touch the ground should light the light up, it's fine. So what I'm gonna do is touch the 
test light right here on that terminal. And I'm gonna squeeze the front brake because this only moves when I squeeze the brake and pressurizes the system. And ready? Squeeze the brake, light kicks on. Let go, on, off. So that tells me that that switch is working like it's supposed to. Uh, for those of you with a front drum brake, um, here is our brake lever, and this is the actual switch for the front drum brake. We have it unplugged right now. Again, solid black wire and a green and yellow wire. I'm gonna connect my solid black wire to my 12 volt positive battery, and my test light is connected to ground. I'm just gonna touch it right here. The end, I'm just gonna hold that. I'll give the lever a squeeze and make sure that the light kicks on. All right, our switch is good. Okay, everything's back together. We're gonna to test the system out to make sure it's working as a whole. First, I'm gonna test the parking light. So one, two clicks back, tail light kicks on, perfect. Let me go to my run mode. Lights off, kick on my headlight and tail light. Light kicks on, perfect. Front brake, nice and bright. Rear brake, on. Okay, everything's working like it's supposed to. With that, this has been Brendan with Common Motor, common-motor.com. On the internet, make sure you like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our newsletter via our website. And of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel down below. And don't forget to ring the bell and we will see you next time.